Hoi! At the moment, there are tons and tons of min-maxing guides for New World coming out, in many, many ways. And a lot of them focus on the early leveling and early crafting experience. Now, I'm somebody who likes to do things efficiently, but I also like to still have fun while doing it. So today, I'd like to suggest ways in which you can have an efficient, but still balanced leveling experience. You can still have fun along the way, you can experience all different types of aspects of the game, while still not falling behind the curve. First, let's roll the intro. Now, let me be clear here. This is not meant to be a shot at the people making these guides at all. That would be highly hypocritical of me. I think those guides are great and they absolutely serve a purpose for every min-maxer that wants to use them. And in fact, I have made one of them specifically for engineering that I thought was very useful. But I don't think everyone wants to play that way and that's a good thing because otherwise we'd be running out of resources very quickly because everyone would be crafting the same things. But then how does that not make the whole premise of this video contradictory? Well, let me explain it with some examples. I could tell you that in order to most efficiently level an early game, you will need 16 rawhide, 40 stone and 45 wood before you get into the first starting town and you need to get 6 petal cap and 6 river crisps immediately in order to craft 3 corruption tinctures and also level your mining enough to get some silver because you will need all of these things at some point of the main quest. That's accurate information, that's actually what you need to do. But here's the kicker. You could also achieve all of these things by just exploring the game a little bit. What I did during the last beta is I decided that I'm just gonna gather a little bit of everything. I started a little bit late anyways because I was asleep when the servers opened up, so I figured okay, I'm just gonna take it a little bit slower and just gather just a little bit of everything so that I can make sure that all my crafting levels are up to par. What happened? I had sufficient resources of everything by the time I hit the first town, and I had way, way, way too many pedal caps and river crests by the time I actually got to that quest. And silver I also had plenty of. So effectively, all the things I needed I got along the way because I played the game in the way that the designers basically intended to be played or think that people would play it. Now, not everyone will play it that way. For example, some people simply don't like gathering. In that case, you can always buy the resources, but of course they come with a pretty hefty price tag in the beginning. Now, let's talk about fun and efficient leveling and then I'll mention some pitfalls in between as well. First of all, when you get into an area where you want to level, you should of course pick up the quests in the main town or in the main area for that. You won't always finish all of them, sometimes some just don't end up being necessary and you maybe outlevel them before you do, but you still want to pick them up to begin with. Often these quests can unlock high level quests in the same area, sometimes even give you dungeon keys etc, so you want to make sure that you at least have the opportunity to do that initially. Along with that, as soon as you're able to, I would recommend picking a faction. That's because you get the PvE and PvP quests from the faction, which can often lead you to the same areas as some other quests do anyways. To get those quests, just look for the guy with your faction tag on the map. And also, in addition to that, you want to have a look at the town board. You will find even more quests, often these are gathering quests, but some of them also require certain PvE goals. The problem with these town quests is that, especially in the beginning, they can often end up being low level, too low level for you even, so you have to decide if it's worth doing. When you've picked up the quests, before you leave town, consider if you want to flag for PvP. PvP flagging provides you with additional experience, as of the time of making this video it's 10%, and if you beat your opponents you get additional XP, weapon mastery, as well as faction tokens. Having leveled both unflagged and flagged, I find the PvP experience a lot more fun, and I think it is rewarding, but it's obviously not for everyone. If you don't enjoy PvP, or you get too frustrated when you get ganked by multiple enemies, then maybe it's not for you. That's okay too. When you've picked up your quests, have a look at the map and find out which quests are generally in the same area. Often you'll be able to finish a ton of quests before you actually go back to town in a single run. You can also use the map to pin the quests that are in the same area by hovering over them and selecting that you want to pin them, so that you have a better overview on the side and unpin the quests that are currently not relevant for you. Now, while you're going through the quests and especially while you're traveling to the quests, pay attention to your surroundings. One of the biggest complaints that new players have with New World is that there are very long walking times in between. This is in my opinion a very reasonable concern, but what you will notice when you level up and when you level your gathering is that it's actually intended to some degree. What happens when you level your gathering professions is that tracking for certain materials gets enabled. So you will start seeing things on the top on your radar that are around you, you'll start seeing resources that are around you. 
and you will find that on these travel path to quests, there are a lot of resources to be gathered. As such, just having your professions leveled a little bit so you get the basic gathering can make a massive difference for your travel routes and how much you get out of them. Usually when I do a larger quest run, I try to have my pockets mostly full of resources by the end of it. You get XP for gathering, and that includes almost every gathering thing that you can get in this game. You get it for mining rocks, you get it for chopping trees, you get it for skinning animals, so that all gives you extra XP. You also get it for crafting, so if you craft anything out of the materials, you get more XP. You also get it for handing in those materials for town quests. Ideally, you want to hand in crafted materials for town quests, because then you get XP for crafting them first, and then you get XP for handing them in as well. And of course, on top of all of that, you also still get the XP for the quests that you did in that area, and you progress with the story. Notice how you're not leaving any fun along the way here. You're experiencing the quest lines, the stories of the game. You're experiencing the PvE combat and potentially the PvP as well. You're experiencing the more relaxing gathering experience, and you experience the satisfaction of having efficient XP returns every time you make it back to town. And you're doing all of this without min-maxing very much. Now, when it comes to the crafting leveling that results from that, I think often you don't even need to do the most efficient crafting path. Often you'll find things that you simply want to craft because you need them or you want to sell them, and often you just end up crafting things because you happen to have a lot of resources for them specifically. So while there is always an optimal way in terms of material usage and XP, this doesn't necessarily mean that it's the optimal way for you. You may have ended up in an area with a lot of hemp and you want to craft something out of fiber which is easier for you, or you may be in an area with a lot of iron and then you can actually craft more of those things. So depending on that, what is most efficient to craft for you time-wise, actually mostly depends on what's already in your pocket. But let's look a little bit more at gearing and leveling. One of the things I would definitely recommend doing is going into the dungeons or expeditions as they're called. Not only do they give you a bunch of XP, and some are even required for the main quest, but they also provide you with a lot of extra gear, and often it's very valuable gear for the level that you're on. And that can obviously improve your leveling experience in the long run, and also enhance your PvP experience. I would recommend doing each dungeon for the main quest at least once, ideally while having some other faction quests or other quests surrounding it that are for the same dungeon, if you're lucky. If you find a decent group and you have some extra keys, I would recommend doing them multiple times because they have repeatable quests as well for extra XP. I need to go into a little bit more detail on this particular aspect so that you can actually get keys for all the dungeons. There is a dungeon for every 10th level starting from level 25. So 25, 35, 45 and so on. Generally, I would recommend doing the dungeons on the recommended levels unless you have a very good group. If you do it much below that, it might just slow you down too much and then it's no longer really efficient or anything. If someone else has a key called Tuning Orb, you can access the dungeon with them, but there are quest lines that guide you to your own keys. And this is where I have to give you a tiny bit of extra information for you to stay efficient. In order to get the keys, you need to do quests in specific areas. For the first dungeon, you actually just need to follow the main quest, and the dungeon is in Windsward for level 25. The second dungeon is in Everfall, and to get a key for that one, you need to do the first batch of quests in Everfall. So this is something worth keeping in mind if you want to do the level 35 dungeon. You can also get a repeatable quest for it from the front of the first dungeon. The third dungeon is in Restless Shore for level 45, and you'll get the key through the main quest once again. The fourth dungeon is in Evanscale Reach, so you want to quest in that area and it unlocks at level 55. Currently there are also two level 60 dungeons, to access those you have to do quests in Reekwater and Eating Grove. So while you don't need to massively min-max to access these dungeons, you want to quest in these particular areas in order to unlock the keys if you're interested in that. What's worth noting with the dungeons is that around the same levels you also get quests for higher level faction ranks. So if you have gathered sufficient faction tokens, get that sufficient faction reputation, then you will get these quests that allow you to unlock higher level gear. These automatically show up in your quest log and I highly recommend completing them, because that gear is very strong on those levels. Now I would generally recommend grabbing some faction gear whenever you get close to faction token cap. It's just really good gear, even if you outlevel it a slight bit, it'll still be very good and it can kind of upgrade the parts where you're not getting good drops. But I would recommend doing the dungeon runs for your corresponding level before you buy any faction gear. On level 25 I bought a full set of faction gear and while it looks cool, it doesn't provide any additional benefits to have a full set. Then I went into the first dungeon and very quickly found at least some gear that outclassed my faction gear, some parts of it, 
and therefore it was kind of a little bit wasted that I had just bought it. So if you do the dungeon first, then you know what you got and you know which parts you still need to upgrade with faction tokens. But wait, there are even more ways to level efficiently. If you look at any of the New World maps that you can find online, I'm looking at newworld-map.com here, you can see certain areas on the map. You can actually hide everything else and just show the mob areas. On New World map, those are classified under points of interest. And if you look at Monarch's Bluff here, you'll see in the very bottom left, there's an area called Lost Area for Group. These are open world PvE areas with elites, and there are a lot of them across the map. If we look up to the top left a little bit, you can actually see another corrupted area here for high level. And these areas are also an excellent farm spot for extra XP and for good gear. Obviously, as the name implies, they are meant for groups, and they might be pretty packed on launch to be honest, because a lot of people consider that they are the most quick way to level. But I would recommend just stopping by there for a bit and having a look if you can farm in one of those areas, just to get some extra gear, get some extra XP, and change things up a little bit in between, so you get the full experience of all aspects. How long you stick around there and how much you want to farm there is completely up to you, but if you ask around in general chat if anyone wants to farm in a particular area, that is something that people will most likely do. And the same thing is true for any corrupted portals that you can close with others in order to get XP and loot rewards. The small portals are very XP efficient, the big ones not quite as much, but on the other hand they provide the resources that you need to craft certain higher level keys later on, so they can still be worth doing and they also drop better loot. On top of all of that, wars are also a great way to get XP and a variety of other resources very quickly. If you have the opportunity to participate in one, it is always going to be worth it XP and gold wise especially. The same thing is true for invasions, even if you lose, but as of the beta those were locked until level 50, so unless they change that you won't benefit from that until the very late stages of leveling. By doing all of these things a little bit, you're experiencing a vast amount of different types of content that New World has to offer, assuming you combine them effectively, go to locations where you have a lot of quests and gather along the way. And if there's a particular aspect that you don't enjoy, you can easily skip it this way as well. Now as I said earlier, there are some potential pitfalls you still want to pay attention to. First, something that I would really recommend doing early is gathering some stone, even if you may not directly have a purpose for it, in order to level your mining. If you find some iron along the way, most definitely pick it up as well. The gathering skill that you want to reach here is 25. On one hand this is useful because you get the silver for the main quest, but more importantly, a skill of 25 unlocks the ability to track iron veins. Iron is going to be extremely valuable initially and you can spend a lot of time just farming iron if you want to, but if you have the tracking enabled, you can just find it along the way and many others will simply not stumble across the same resource spots because sometimes iron can be pretty hidden, especially in the dark. That is not an issue for you if you can track it, and this can make sure that you still have a sufficient flow of iron most of the time without having to do dedicated farm runs for it. Likewise, I highly recommend leveling your harvesting to 30 in order to be able to gather any magical plants that you find, and this includes some of the plants that you need for the main quest. You definitely want to pick up any herbs you find along the way for quick healing pots, and what you can do after that is either you farm hemp in order to get a lot of fiber, that is what other people recommend. I think fiber is so easy to come by that it may not even be necessary though, and I would actually recommend going to one of the farms. In the early game you will be sent to a farm with lost enemies, with the zombies, uh, no matter what region you start in, I think they all have farms somewhere. On these farms you will find a variety of vegetables on the ground. They're easy to overlook because sometimes they just look like they're part of the environment, but they can actually be harvested. The reason I recommend doing this is because the fruits and vegetables you get from that can be used to level your cooking. And you get a ton of light rations early on that way, which is super nice for sustain while leveling. You don't have to worry about health much at all, because you can just always snack away on those. It's also nice for PvP by the way. So if you see a farm early on, just stop by there for a bit and play farmer for a moment, just to gather enough to get to 30 gathering. Especially Monarch's Bluff is an extremely farm dense area with lots of different resources to gather from the farms. The other gathering skills, excluding fishing, which is more of a money making profession, kinda solve themselves along the way. And then I have some extra tips to prevent being slowed down. I would recommend always filling your extra bag slots so that you can have the maximum carrying capacity at all times. You can get some bags from quests, but you can also craft some bags that are usually a bit better because they come with extra perks. 
What you need to do in order to craft those is get a Rune of Holding from your faction vendor. The rest of the resources are self-explanatory and you're going to craft that at an outfitting station. I would also highly recommend building your upgraded crafting gear, especially the iron gear, as soon as possible as that massively speeds up your gathering speed and therefore your overall progression speed. Always use Athos when crafting new gathering tools because it can give you extra benefits like sometimes getting some Azoth back from gathering which can be very nice for frequent early fast travel. So as you can tell there are a few things that you may want to pay attention to in order for things to go as smooth as possible but overall I think it is relatively easy to level efficiently while still having tons of fun in the game and experiencing the game in the way that the developer intended it to, rather than just brute forcing it and punching down elite mobs for hours and hours and hours. Again, of course, if that is the playstyle you prefer and you just want to rush for 60, no harm done. But I figure that for a lot of people it's interesting to keep up with the level curve, especially if you don't have that much time to play. And I think that this is a way to do that while still getting to experience all of the game's different aspects. If you enjoyed this video and you want to see more like it, please consider subscribing and clicking the bell so you get notified of other upcoming videos, for example the weapon guides that we're going through this week, as well as some more in-depth mechanics as well. If you have any questions or you just want to chat, don't hesitate to stop by on my Twitch or Discord at any point, the links are both in the description and the pinned comment down below. I'd like to hear from you guys what type of leveling experience you are explaining to have. Are you going super hard, super fast? Are you going super slow? Are you just gathering? Are you going with a group? I'm really curious. Tell me in the comments what your way of leveling will be. Mine will most certainly be a mix as described in this very video, along with a lot of PvP, as much as I can get of that. That, thank you very much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this, and I hope to see you for the next one soon. Duke Sloth, out.